the following video, I am showing a builder's grade type setup. A builder's grade meaning in most subdivisions, builders are using what's called builder's grade tile, which is basically a 4x4 ceramic. Uh, sometimes they can be 6x6 ceramic, but regardless, the builder's grade products are about the cheapest that you can actually buy. Not only that, but when they are putting something together, they are not adhering to the standards that you would on a custom type of shower. Therefore, inevitably, you're going to end up with a failure. I have another video called the 100 year shower. So even though on that video, and I'll post that link down below, even though on that video um, I show that there wasn't necessarily a failure, although the failure was, was soon to come, um, that shower still lasted 30 years. However, that doesn't always guarantee everything because all builders do things separately. And there's no way to mitigate a bad shower job. There is no way that you could actually say, okay, well, because I have a builder's grade shower, let me take these proactive steps. You know, these things are going to happen as you see on the following video. There's nothing the homeowner could have done to interfere with the failure process. Um, in fact, this wasn't necessarily a failure. This was an upgrade. This bathroom was built 17 years ago. And although there were a lot of problems, which you'll see in the video, those problems won't rear their ugly head until probably if he had done nothing another year, two years, three years down the road, then there would have been bigger problems. Although there was a ceiling leak, a very slight ceiling leak in his kitchen uh, some time ago. And he had a plumber come out and they kind of surmised that maybe it was just excess water from coming out of the shower, whatever the case was. But that was a heads up at that point that there was a problem. Unfortunately, even if he had torn the ceiling open to look up under there, very slight possibility that he would have really seen anything, although you never know. So really the only thing you can do proactive as a homeowner is one of two things, unfortunately. One of them is renovate your shower. If you've been in your house more than about probably five years, seven years, and you have builder's grade tile, do a renovation because not only are you going to save a lot of heartache and headache and money because you will save money in the long run if you let it go to the point where in this video I'm showing the damage that was caused after 17 years so that's one thing you can do proactive the other thing is um, doing caulking making sure if your grout is not sealed when people move into a house they think about pressure washing their house. They think about painting their house. They think about um, cleaning their carpet. They think about doing certain things as a homeowner, homeowner maintenance. Unfortunately, they never give thought to their shower. You buy a new house, well, it's new to you anyway. It could be five or 10 or 15 or 20 years old, and it never dawns on you to do anything to your shower. You just get in and take, you know, take your shower, unless it has mold and mildew. Um, but nobody ever thinks about sealing their shower. The builder, the builder guaranteed never sealed anything. So when you move into a house, make sure that you seal your uh, tile and or grout very well. Also make sure that you do the caulking and if there's any grout missing, make sure that you fill in on that. Uh, there are a lot of things with builder's grade tile that you cannot avoid. You know, if they didn't slope the curb, if they didn't slope your knee wall, if you know if certain things are done wrong you know you just kind of have to live with it but i guess i guess the focus of what i'm trying to tell you is just know the difference between a custom job and a builder's grade job are hugely different although having said that i have a habit of taking apart custom showers that have been built because they have been done wrong also so the best thing that i can tell you is due diligence you know, find out about your contractor, find out their experience, find out, you know, the, the most that you can about your contractor that you're going to be hiring. Um, I know it's not easy. I get a lot of calls from all over the country, people asking me if they can get a referral up in their particular area, and I, I don't know people all over the country. I can't, I can't refer. Um, finding somebody's work online is probably the best bet. Finding a presence on the internet of that person's work 
um, Googling that person, you know, is probably the best way that I could tell you to possibly get a, a good job. You know, getting references, nah, it has its advantages, but also has its disadvantages. You know, you don't know who the person you're calling could be a cousin or an uncle or, you know, somebody else is related to the person. So getting references is not always, you know, the, the catch-all type of thing. Uh, any, any Tyler that's out there, that's been out there for a while is going to have a presence on the internet and or they're going to have a relationship with a tile place, a tile store, some place that distributes their product and therefore that place could probably reference you somebody better than doing it on your own because you know they are, they have a relationship, a working relationship if you will. So, as I said, um, going to specifically a tile place, you know, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you don't know what you're getting, you know, those guys, those guys are basically independent contractors anyway, Home Depot and Lowe's gets, you know, pinches off a little bit for themselves for the referral, but it doesn't guarantee a quality job, nor does it guarantee that you're not going to have a headache if the job isn't quality, because then you have two battles to fight. You have to fight Home Depot and you have to fight the contractor that worked for Home Depot. Anyway, enjoy the video. Hopefully uh, you'll get something out of it. This is kind of a small portion of a larger job that I'm doing, but I thought it was, uh, I thought it was beneficial to show you the damage that can be done when you have a builder's grade type setup. And we have the builder's grade tile, which most uh, houses, unless they're spec houses, um, is always going to be builder's grade tile. When I say builder's grade, I mean this is a ceramic tile that builders get, you know, pretty cheap. They throw it in there, they're gone, and they move on to the next house in a subdivision, and they're very quick to do things. So you can see here where the grout has started to want to pop out, and again, 17 years later, this is what I can do to this grout. So a lot of people ask me, what's wrong with builder's grade tile? Um, the, the tile itself, there's nothing wrong with it. But when you have builder's grade tile, you have unsanded grout, and with unsanded grout, there always seems to be problems. I can see where there's been regrouting done over the years. Um, all along here, there's always going to be little grout issues going on, and that's the main reason why I don't like it. This bubbling that you see in here, these holes, are caused by when the guy came in here and started grouting, he was in a hurry. so. So the grout is mixed very, very thin, which is not a good thing because adhesion qualities deteriorate the thinner you make the grout. Um, and then that's what happens. The grout doesn't last. The buildings settle and they move and they do all kinds of things. And the end result is the grout starts coming out. So with unsanded grout, it's not as tough and sturdy as sanded grout, but you're stuck doing unsanded grout with builder's grade tile. And that is the reason I don't like builder's grade tile, for no other reason than that. In a shower especially, a backsplash or something, different different thing, but in a shower, um, I just have no need for builder's grade tile. On a shower floor, it's compounded, because if you're having issues on the, on the wall like this, then imagine what's happening with your floor. You have these very thin, unsanded grout lines going into your, your mortar mix, which is basically your your uh, pan so the pan inevitably will get wet and it will fail over time um, it's a matter of time when it does not if it does um, having said that uh, I'm a little surprised that they slope the bench um, I don't see this usually with builders they will not slope the curb and they will not slope the bench if there's one and they did slope the bench which prevented a lot of water penetration from ruining whatever the makeup of the bench is, but regardless, you still have these lines which are unsanded grout and water will go through there and potentially ruin things um, going into there. I don't know the, the makeup of this bench. I don't know if it's concrete block. I'm going to assume that it is because this isn't more than about 10 inches in width. So an 8 inch concrete block with the backer and the tile and all that stuff, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is a concrete bench, but regardless, if they, didn't, if they didn't build their bench within the shower pan, in other words, the shower pan liner goes up this wall, right? So the bench is on the outside portion and water does seep through here, then potentially it could also seep through that concrete block and then eventually drip down into your ceiling below and then you've got a big issue. So that's the reason why builders 
gray tile is not my preference. I would talk anybody out of it that wanted to do that. Uh, they did, however, make this curb flat. Um, more often than not, where I see damages, water damage and showers is going to be the curb, is going to be benches, and it's going to be knee walls. So, more than likely, if this is a wood curb, there's a lot of wood rot going on with this curb, unless they wrapped everything and, and waterproofed it, which I doubt very, very much that they did. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There's not, no, no damage, no uh, visual damage or no physical damage other than, you know, it's dated and they just want to do a renovation. But if you look at the caulking here, uh, there's, there's a lot of mold and mildew. And the caulking has been done, you know, many times over the last 17 years. This mold and mildew, and again, I'm going to go out on a limb based on my experience. Uh, the mold and mildew is usually happening because you have sheetrock, and then another layer of sheetrock, and then you have this mud cap. And so this tile is meant to have this mud cap to make it look like it's a thicker wall than it is, which it is, but let me get back to the issue. When they set the pan, um, sorry, when they set the wall board, they set it first and then they pour the pan. So the pan material is pushing up against the wall board, which in this case is going to be sheetrock. It could be door rock or something. 17 years ago, they were making that, but regardless of the makeup, the water does uh, wick up the wall. And when it wicks up the wall, it's got nowhere to go. It can't evaporate as fast as it goes in. And then it begets mold and mildew around the perimeter. This is always the case always the case when there's a lot of mold and mildew where uh, the transition from the vertical to the horizontal meets you're going to have mold and mildew and it'll never go away the other issue that you have is when the pan is saturated and this is the end of the pan and the wall board is stuck inside of the pan this will continue to happen there's you can bleach and you can recock and do all that stuff but you'll always be chasing mold and mildew because it was done incorrectly Having said all that, it was done incorrectly and still lasted 17 years. So I haven't really done a lot so far. All I did is started banging on this curb and it was very, very weak. This curb was weak. Uh, as I mentioned already in the first part of the video, I anticipate the whole building process of what they did. And as I already said, and I already alluded to, probably they used Durrock. Although I don't know that there's dirt rock on the wall, there probably is if it's on the curb. But here's the issue. This, this kind of annoys me for a lot of different reasons. And I run into this on builder's grade showers a lot. There is absolutely no reason to cut this strip of dirt rock that didn't overlap the edge. So you have dirt rock here and you have dirt rock here. And the way I build them anyway is, is once those two pieces are up, then I cut the top portion, right? So they cut the top portion to fit the fit the, the two by four that's here, so three and a half inches instead of four and a half. And I don't understand why they would do that. It's not a huge deal, except that look at the gap you have, right? Um, and then on top of that, as I anticipated, they didn't waterproof anything. This curb is probably has been wet. And they didn't wrap it. <laughs> Look at this. This is crazy. So they didn't wrap the curb. When I say wrap it, they didn't take the pan liner all the way over and around to wrap the curb. And then they perforated the pan liner. I didn't rip this. This is this is a cut. This isn't a rip. This is a cut they did. So I don't know the reason why they cut, but it started right down here and came up and just ended. And as I already said at the very beginning of the video, I'm not clairvoyant. Understand something. I do a lot of tear outs. As many showers as I build, I tear those out as well. So every time I do one and I, I kind of know, I know what I know by experience, I, I anticipate what's going to happen. And I told you earlier that the curb would probably be saturated with water and I should have also prefaced it by saying, or rot it out. Because, look at that. That, that is missing an end. <laughs> There's no end there. It's just gone. All this wood is just, is just gone, gone. 
It's always the ends too. The ends are your Achilles heel. If you get water into your curb, yes, you will get it everywhere if they didn't build it right and they didn't waterproof it and all that, which I already referenced. But the ends are always the place where water is going to get in. Why? Because they put their tile up like this, right? They don't put their tile up under it so that water runs off. They always put their tile here. So here's your little spot all the way around where water can get in. And because they didn't slope their curb either, and because they didn't waterproof it, and because they didn't wrap it, and because <laughs> all these issues end up to, to inevitability of physical issues happening. Same as I said before, the physical issues are a given if these things aren't adhered to. Now, that they did everything wrong and still lasted almost 20 years harkens back to my video, which I'll also link below the 100 year shower. Because everybody's like, you know, you must be use Curdy Schluter and yada 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 to make your, your shower bigger and better and stronger so stuff like this doesn't happen. But there's a lot of other ways that you can still negate all of these issues from happening without using the most expensive materials. Some of this is common sense. Some of this you just you just don't do, as I said, you know, you don't have your backer board on the both sides and then put it in the middle. You don't do that. You overlap it, you butter your curb, you red guard it, you do all those things and you will save yourself any of this damage. But you don't need Curry Schluter in order to make a shower last 30, 40, 50 years. It's just not necessary to use all those products. However, a builder is never going to use those products, so I always anticipate problems like this. This is extremely profound, um, but it's very typical. So, you know. I'm going to say that the door must have gone this way because very little damage back here. All the damage is here where the door was over here near the panel. I'm gonna guess and say that, that it was hinged on this left side. That's a lot of damage. A lot, a lot, a lot of damage. Look how that thing moves, look how that curb moves. What you have. You have uh, some horrible, horrible wood rot, although it's not rotted on the other side. Water takes the path of least resistance, and there's a slight slope to this floor going to this direction, and the water is pooling here. So, a heads up for anybody that has builder grade shower like this. Um, after conferring with the customer, I found out that he had a small leak right below here is the kitchen. And I guess a year or so ago, he had a small leak, little pinhole thing going on in the ceiling. So he had a plumber come out to try and uh, figure out what the reason his leak would be. And um, never knew it was a curb, but that's what it was the whole time. As it happens, the two pieces of plywood come together literally right where the curb was rotted out. So the water was getting through all that wood, which it was already rotted away basically, and had an easy path down to the ceiling below. Um, but even if that wasn't there, this is OSB. The ply, it's not even real plywood, it's just particle board, and the particle board would have rotted out. Um, this is squishy. You can see the bowing that's going on. So. Inevitably, this has to be replaced once I get all this out. Um, it's, it's, it's been compromised um, from years and years of this saturation. Uh, putting the wall board inside your pan, see, this is sand topping mix. 
This is what your, uh, hold on a second. This is a makeup of a shower pan, which is sand topping mix. And it has a uh, Portland, Portland cement added to it. But years and years later, after saturation, 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 it just becomes sand again. And this shower pan has become sand and it's also wet. Um, so the only good thing about this is that it's going to be easy to break up. If it were solid and dry, it would be much more difficult. So this whole pan will come out in a couple, couple of three or four chunks um, relatively easily. Um, but this is wet because of builder's grade tile and non-sanded grout. It's wet because they never waterproofed anything. That's why it's wet. When people talk about, so oh, by the way, all of this, all of this that's inside of your shower pan is also the reason you have the mold and mildew, which I already alluded to. So again, I'm not clairvoyant when I knew that there was issues with the curb. I'm not clairvoyant when I knew that the mold and mildew happened here. There's reasons why this simple stuff happens. And when you're building a shower, you need to realize all of this stuff so that you don't make the same mistakes. Cinder block. <laughs> This is exactly what I said. This is very weird to me anyway. I already anticipated this was block, an eight inch block <laughs> with, with the tile behind it and the tile in front of it. And they built it out of block so it would not leak. They went through a lot of work, the mason did, to make sure that this was, in fact, they, they even tiled first before they did the block, which begs the question, where is the pan liner? Because I don't see pan liner. So, I still don't know if this bench is inside or outside of the pan. Hopefully it's outside of the pan, and in which case there won't be any damage down here. As I said, they sloped off the top of the bench. They built it out of block, which is a little crazy, but, you know, probably a good thing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like I guessed all of this stuff ahead of time. They put, they skim coated, they skim coated concrete on the front of this. They, no, they didn't. They put Duroc. So they put Duroc. Somehow they glued Duroc to the to the concrete block. Um, so they made a strong bench and then messed up anyway. There is the pan liner. There is the pan liner. Look at that green board. Green board with no waterproofing on it. There's your mastic that they stuck the tile with. And here's your mold and mildew. So, because this was inside of the pan, you see, it doesn't really matter what the makeup is of your bench. This is six block. Six block they did this and then bricked it off at the top and put a slope on it with with the brick and made it extremely sturdy. Yes, the bench is sturdy, but it doesn't matter because this is still porous, you see, which means when they had a failure as far as water getting into the pan, water wicked up the bench. You can see the line, you can see the white line of the calcium all the way up to there. And then of course that was saturated forever, so that just got black, black mold going on there. And then, you know, it's touching the grain board down here. And yeah, so mold and mildew is gonna be prevalent. This is crazy. This 
thing, this thing weighs 120 pounds. Um, oftentimes I'm asked, how come I don't build my benches out of block? Because I build my benches outside of the pan. So that there's never going to be any damage because I know my benches are tiled and, and waterproofed and all that stuff. So they're impervious to water. So it doesn't matter what the makeup of the bench is. This is a block bench, but they did so many things wrong, it negated the whole idea of building something strong. Even if you built this on the outside, you don't need block. What is the point of using block? If you build it on the outside and you do your tile right, sealing, waterproofing, then it doesn't matter the makeup of the bench. Any more than it matters the makeup of the wall. I don't have an issue that they use red, uh, green board. I have the issue that they didn't waterproof it and that they put builder's grade tile on it. You know, they didn't waterproof anything. Green board, cardboard, 8 inch concrete block. It doesn't matter. If you don't waterproof it, you are susceptible to moisture penetration. End of story. There's, there's, it doesn't get simpler than that. It's just common sense. Another thing builders do a lot. They, they pour, in this case, this is, um, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I can't get this focused right. Um, they pour the excess mortar down the drain. Look at that. It goes to about a quarter size by the time it... This is an inch and a half drain. And then it just tapers down like a funnel to about a quarter size. Um, I've seen mortar. I've seen grout. All kinds of stuff poured in the drain. So if your drain ever clogs up, that's a pretty good indication. Sometimes it's just calcium deposit that you end up with, but a lot of times it's all the crap the builder puts down in there. This pan is getting ready to come out um, because it's already wet. It'll probably break as I try and lift it up, but I have to cut out that drain first with the inside pipe cutter so that that doesn't crack below the floor. it in half relatively easily in place because it's very heavy and we'll not get it downstairs in one piece so I just hit a hammer along there cut it in half into a separate piece that's it shower pan. Pretty much that easy. As I said, when they're wet, they're a lot easier to crack. If this was really, really dry, I would be busting it up with a, with a little two-pound sledgehammer until I get it into the sections. By the way, sorry about the bad lighting. Just a heads up if you want to know. These lights in these bathrooms sometimes go off automatically. They have a thermal overload that's built into the light, and there's an attic up here so the attic is, is really hot today, and the attic is very, very hot. And the thermal overload kicks in because the light was on earlier, which heats things up more. So they usually go off for about 10, maybe 20 minutes. They cool down, come back on. So if your light ever does that in your shower, or your bathroom, or anywhere for that matter, that's the reason why. It's not a defective light, it's just a safety device. So all the material is out of here. I'm sorry, i got to keep coming back over and over. I just keep on running into more and more little anomalies going on. Look at that wood rot. That's just, that's horrible. This is 17 years of damage, not only to the curb, but there's no flooring left. Those are floor joists, you see. 
<sighs> That's what happens when you get a substandard job done. And you know, you don't know what you don't know. This is this is very funny. Um, drains, these this drain flange apparently didn't have any screws to anchor it down. So what did they do? They put a dozen nails. <sighs> <laughs> they put a dozen nails around the edge of the drain. Long nails. Look at that. Jesus Christ. I mean, I guess whatever works. <laughs> it would never dawn on me to put nails down there. If if there's no way to if there's no way to anchor the drain because there's not four holes to anchor the drain with, which I do with OD drains because they always have those holes, then then the anchoring itself should go down below. You know, there should be a pipe strap and a P-trap or somewhere. Some type of anchoring has to go down below. All these nails around the edge of here was never, never a good idea to begin with. It's hard to believe a plumber would do that, but I guess they did. <laughs>